One of the things that makes me feel so lucky to be the minister here is that Northwoods understands the power of music. And every Sunday, our musicians bring that power to us in worship, inspiring us, comforting us, moving us, reminding us. So thank you, Paul, in particular for inspiring me today with one of my very favorite songs by Garth Brooks. Now, one thing that you might not know about me is I love Garth Brooks, absolutely love. In high school, my friends and I would just drive for hours because gas was cheap and we were foolish, listening to Garth Brooks and singing at the top of our lungs. And it was actually a Garth Brooks song that I thought about very first when I started thinking about what is courageous action. It was not, funny enough, the one that Paul sang, although We Shall Be Free definitely is such a song. It was a song called The Change. And the the refrain of this song, if you don't know it, goes, I hear them saying, you'll never change things. And no matter what you do, it's still the same thing. But it's not the world that I am changing. I do this so the world will know that it will not change me. Today, we'll be talking about courageous actions the third in a six-part series on the mission of Northwoods, compassionate community, spirited searching, and courageous action. I want to start today, or start my part of today at least, by talking about courage itself. First, the things that courage is not. Bravery. Courage is not the same as bravery. Courage is not the same as confidence. And courage is certainly not the same as fearlessness, though these are perhaps all things we can find through the acting out of our courage. What courage is? The best definition I have seen recently comes from the poet Mark Nepo, who was quoted at the beginning of our worship service. And I'll, quote, I'll share that quote in a little more detail. The word courage comes from the Latin core, which literally means heart. The original use of the word courage means to stand by one's core. This is a striking concept that reinforces the belief found in almost all traditions that living from the center is what enables us to face whatever life has to offer, to find our way to our core to stand by our core, and then to sustain the practice of living from our core, to live out of our courage. If to find our way to our core is to face the lion, then to stand by our core is to be the lion. And to sustain the practice of living from our core, to live out of our courage, is to find our way in the world by tracking inner courage and where it lives. Inner courage and outer courage and the relationship between the two means that we can't talk about courage with also, without also talking about risk because courage requires risk. There must be something at stake. The mythical dragon slayer would certainly be less impressive if the dragon was the size of a kitten and breathed rainbows instead of flames. In fact, I don't think he'd be a hero at all, no matter how much gold he brought home. And risk is intimately tied with fear in us as much as in the dragon slayer. So if courage requires risk and risk is frightening, then courage requires fear, not fearlessness. You may be able to be brave without fear, but I'm not sure you can be courageous which means that courageousness is also about a willingness to make mistakes, to get it wrong, to screw up, and to try again. 
I have shared with you in worship before, and I'm sure I will again, one of my very favorite touchstone quotes. It's from Miss Frizzle, that great philosopher who tells us to take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. Incidentally, while I was writing this sermon, I had the realization that take chances, make mistakes, get messy, pretty much encapsulates every sermon I have ever given and probably ever will. And I'm okay with that, one could do worse. Because when I say make mistakes, I don't mean that we should focus on our failure, and I certainly don't mean that we should ignore those times when our mistakes cause harm. When I have caused harm, whether through my mistakes or, as is even more embarrassing, when I have caused harm through the best idea I ever had, I do what I can to make it right and learn what I need to avoid in the future. That is also courage. Mistakes can make us better if we learn from them. When I am trying to make right what I have gotten wrong, I am very conscious that I am drawing on my courage to be present to my own shortcomings and to my own learning. Always in beta applies to a lot more than online church. So perhaps part of courage is also humility, which seems at odds with so many of the exemplars and profiles of courage that we see in the media and on TV and in movies. Now, there are many, many visceral fears, fears of bodily harm that I can name, even in my white cisgender body. I can fear the police at a peaceful demonstration. I can fear arrest, getting into a fight because someone doesn't like my rainbow pride shirt of a person I'm kissing, getting the gravy boat thrown at me at Thanksgiving when the discussion turns to politics. I also know that these visceral fears are even more ever present for many of my siblings of color, my trans and non-binary siblings, and those who exhibit a more marginalized body than the one I move around in. But for me, and perhaps for you as well, my fears, a lot of what holds me back from stepping forward into courageous action is more intangible. Fear of being wrong, fear of making mistakes, fear of not getting it right, fear of not being good enough, fear that my small actions won't really change things. No matter what I do, it's still the same thing. And in those moments, when I am at my best and when I rise to the occasion, it is my faith that gives me courage. Our theology that tells me otherwise. My work, as imperfect as it is, matters. Your work, as imperfect as it is, matters. We do this so the world will not change us. Courage requires risk, embraces fear, knows humility, and find it, finds its power when we are true to the core of our being. So let's talk a little bit about action. There is a quote that you may have heard from Lilla Watson, who is an indigenous Australian artist and activist and academic. And she says, if you have come here, to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Earlier in the service, we heard the moving words and witness of Valerie Kaur. I chose this because I was looking at a bunch of different spoken word poetry pieces to share this, this Sunday with you. And I remembered this that I had, I, had, I had seen this video a couple of years ago, probably when it first came out, when it was first done. Um, 
in early 2017 is probably when I saw it, it's a couple of years ago. And I remember, yes, I want something like that. And then I said, well, why don't I just use that? That's great. But there was a lot that I didn't remember. And watching it again, you might even call a spiritual experience. Here's what I came away with. On top of the inspiration to action. If my liberation is bound up with yours and hers and her son's, and in my deepest core, I know that that is true. If my liberation is bound up with others, then it is an illusion built on privilege that I can even ask the question, should I get involved? I'm already involved by virtue of my shared existence on this spinning ball of rock and length. To consider whether or not I will get involved, whether or not I choose to fight systemic oppression and counter false narratives that divide us, to even think I have a choice. That choice is an illusion built on nothing but comfort and privilege. Each day, as part of my meditation, I ask myself, what can I lose in the service of liberation? How can we all get more free? And here's an answer. I can lose this illusion of choice and embrace a path of courage. I can see that illusion for what it is. It's fear. It's a desire to remain safe to protect myself and ignore the suffering of others. But this fear is a liar and I can lose it. Because not only is this illusion a lie, it is a heresy. Yes, I said it, it is a heresy. The illusion of our separateness is a Unitarian Universalist heresy. It is utterly incompatible with our shared faith, which tells us that we share both a common source and a common destiny, which draws on the words and deeds of prophetic people to remind me that between that source and destination is a journey we all share, and that no one is free until everyone is free. By recognizing this illusion for what it is, it doesn't make my fears go away because that's what we need courage for. I will continue with the words of the poet Mark Nepo who writes some really great stuff. He says, to encourage means to impart strength and confidence, to inspire and hearten. So the question unfolds, how do we encourage ourselves? each other and the world? And just what does it mean to live a life of encouragement? I've come to believe that we can only learn about and discover the capacity and meaning of our courage in the context of our struggles and how we face and inhabit the challenges life presents to us. In this, courage is an applied art of spirit, not something we can manipulate, but something to live into. Recovering the source and living it out in the world alone and together is a lifelong education. One that we must ultimately inhabit alone, but enliven together. Because courageous action is not just about others. It is about ourselves as well. Thinking about courage in this way allows us the courage to face ourselves, each other, and the unknown. Like the courage to choose compassion over judgment and love over fear, to withstand the tension of opposites and to give up what no longer works in order to stay close to what is sacred. Buddhist teacher Jack Kornfield tells us that if our compassion does not include ourselves, it is incomplete. 
And if our courage does not include ourselves, it is incomplete as well. We take courage and courageous action on our own behalf by honoring our full selves, by being authentically and unapologetically who we are and nothing less. We are called to be the lion, to use Mark Nepo's phrase, not just for the world, but for ourselves. Because that inner world and outer world are linked. There is just one world. One of my mentors, Reverend Burton Carley, who is now retired, asked me many years ago, and it has stuck with me ever since. Where are you called to spend your courage? I hope you are willing to spend a bit of your courage on yourself because there is just one world and you are part of it. I was reminded a couple of days ago of Joseph, Joseph Campbell and his work on the archetypal hero who was only a hero because of their journey, the hero's quest. Now heroes, we might, we might accept our idols of courage. They're also often solitary, stronger and better than the rest of us, independent and set apart from us mere mortals. But I am also reminded again of music, a song we played in worship a couple weeks ago, Nothing More by Alternate Roots and a line that I've had in my head ever since. Heroes don't look like they used to. They look like you do. The journey to courage is an interior one, a quest that lies before each and all of us. My faith gives me courage. And my faith is not just in ideas and beliefs. My faith, I also put my faith in you, in human capacity and potential in the strength and magic of relationships and communities that are built around the shared belief that we are in this together. This is what encourages me. What I remembered from Valerie Kaur's address was breathe. What I had forgotten was push. So today we breathe and tomorrow we push. May we each find what we need to live both a life of courage and encouragement for ourselves and for each other. <laughs>